Sister Cheryl Mundy Copeland is in the house, so let's give Cheryl a hand. There she comes. She's from all the way from Dayton, Ohio. She went to, now she's out in California being different. But she's still sweet and Cheryl. Still my little Cheryl. I felt old at that moment.
What a mighty God we serve. You all are celebrating another church anniversary. And uh, I went ahead and sold my $94. And uh, I'm so excited because our church just built a life center just like this. And I'm sowing today because I believe that the same anointing upon you to burn this mortgage, we're going to burn our mortgage. Come on, can y'all praise God for it? And because I know God is getting ready to move in this revival and I'm just helping to kick it off, I brought my $36. I'm going to leave it because I believe in what God's going to do. So we greet you in the name of Jesus. How many of you came for a word today? Don't fool me now. Anybody need a word? And so let's jump right into it. Second Chronicles chapter number seven. Second Chronicles chapter number seven. I've been preaching all week at several services on Sunday, four nights in a place called Coy, Alabama. I was in Pittsburgh Friday night, and I'm here with y'all today, so y'all pray for the preacher. Verse number 12, when you're there, shout amen. Amen. Thank God for this awesome music ministry. Let's praise God for them. Uh, I don't know if y'all knew this, but Order My Steps was my favorite preparation song. I started preaching at six years old, and they would have to play that song on the way to the services as my preparation song. So I thank you. Y'all took me way back. Amen. Some of y'all say, he ain't got that far back to go. (laughs) I know it. I know it. Praise God for all the ministers and the officers. God bless you. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I've heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Don't just pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Here's the blessing. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will Heal their land. Just grab your neighbor, our Father and our God. We thank you for this preaching privilege. I pray now as always, dear God, would you stand in my body, think through my mind, speak with my tongue. And so much that as your word goes forth, your name would be glorified, your people edified, the devil horrified. And we claim it done now in Jesus' name. And the people said, amen. I want to talk this morning about a turnaround church. Say that with me, a turnaround church. Just look at somebody and say, we are a turnaround church. Church anniversary is a significant opportunity given to us by God to remember, to reemphasize, and to revive the Lord's church. 
to go back to what the purpose of the church is in the earth. The church is designed to be a house of prayer, a house of power, a house of hope, a house of healing. This is the power that the church possesses by God. And I don't know about you, but we are living in an hour where the church cannot afford to just be pretty. Y'all going to help me preach in here? We cannot afford to come to church just looking pretty. And we dare not sit in the presence of the Lord act pretty like some of you this morning. This is the dilemma of Solomon who on the heels of his father who had designed and laid the blueprint for the house of God. The promise is now fulfilled and they are standing before a pretty campus. But Solomon, the wisest man who has ever lived, you remember that boy who, out of all the things he could have asked God for, asked God for wisdom and discernment to be able to effectively rule over his people. He is wise enough to know that even though he is standing in a pretty building, even though they have built a pretty campus, they need God's power. And is there anybody this morning that can declare we need God's power? Y'all not going to help me up in here. We, we need power over sickness, power over sin, power over struggles, power over Satan. The church ought not be just pretty. And what a pretty campus you have. God has blessed you in a mighty way. But I've stopped by as your pastor is in an evangelistic emphasis mode. I've come to remind you that you will never win folk to Christ. You will never take authority over Satan just being pretty. Y'all not going to help me preach. There's somebody that can say, I need the power of the Lord. Just nudge somebody and say, I need his power. I need, I, I need, I need, I need his power. And, and can I tell you, the true power of the church is not in how pretty it is. But the true power power of a church is found in God's turnaround ability when we are faced with problems. Now I want to make sure I'm in the right house. Is there anybody that's ever faced some problems? In fact, I've got a funny feeling there are some of you this morning who are dealing with some problems. You left some problems at home. You're dreading going to work in the morning because you know that you will be met with some problems and some problem people. But can I tell you, it is in the midst of life's greatest problems that God's greatest power is present. Let me say that one more time. It is in the midst of life's greatest problems that God's greatest power is made present. And so if you've been through some problems, if you're going through some problems, and if you know you will potentially face some problems, let not your heart be troubled. 
Lord, I wish I had somebody. Be not dismayed because it's a setup for God to turn it around. And all I need is about 25 of you that need God to turn some stuff around. Don't wait till the end of the message. I want to give you a praise, Paul's opportunity. Go ahead and shout because he sent me here with good news. Your turnaround is on the way. The church ought to be a turnaround place. When your life is twisted and turned around, the church ought to be a place that facilitates the miracle working power of the Lord. Is there anybody that knows he's still in the miracle working business? Have you any rivers? Seem like you can't cross over. Have you any mountains you cannot tunnel through? Do I have a witness? God specializes. Do I have a witness in things that seem impossible? And he will do what no other power can do. Just nudge your neighbor and say he can turn it around. He can turn it around. He can turn around. And, and, so, and so God sets this thing up. Solomon has been praying. You ought to thank God for a leader that got enough sense to pray. I thank God for your anointed praying pastor that has enough sense to know that we cannot do it by ourselves. So the Lord says, I've heard your prayer, King Solomon. And I want you to know that I have chosen this place. Do y'all hear this church anniversary message? I have chosen this church. Glory to God. I, I, I have chosen this ministry as uh, my house. Look at somebody say, we are God's house. We are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are God's house. That means God ain't just going to stop by and stay a little while. I didn't say this was God's hotel because there are some churches that are just a hotel for God. He, he stop in a day or so and he leaves. But is there anybody that can say, I want to be the house of God? So God says, I, 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 I'm setting you up. He said, when I, not if I. But when I, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. In other words, what he's saying is when I allow problems to show up. Y'all ought to be shouting in this area because we've been talking about what happened right here in Dayton back at home. This is a prime opportunity not for us to be afraid but for us to stand and say our God can do what the police cannot do. Our God can do what a politician cannot do. We serve a powerful God. In church, we must understand that our salvation doesn't give us an exemption from life's difficulty. I see somebody, you've been there, you've done that, you've got the t-shirt. You know that if you just keep on living, all of us will face some type of problem. All of us will face some challenge. How you know it? Come on, Job, talk to us. A man born of a woman is of a few days. Do I have any Bible readers? And those days are filled with trouble, but I'm glad Jesus could follow up Job's words. He said, even when you got trouble around you, let not your heart be troubled. When you know that we serve a turnaround God, you do not Fret yourself. You do not fear when things have been turned around negatively. Because you know that God is able to turn it around. Can I tell you about it? 
God said, if you want a turnaround, here it is, church. When things have been turned around negatively, before I turn it around, you've got to be willing to turn around. Oh, uh, okay, 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 uh, all right. He, he says, if my people, if, if, come on, if, my, my, not, not the legislature, if my people, not the police force, if my people, not the education system, if, so when problems show up, he's looking for his people. Problems are always an opportunity for identification because folk will know you are a child of God not by how you act in good times, but how you act when problems show up. So before there can be transformation or a turnaround, we first got to have some identification. If my people, we are children of God. I need somebody from that old church that can testify one thing I know. I've been born again. I am a child of the most high God. And that's a moment where you've got to make that thing personal. There's some of you, you've been hanging on to grandmama coattails. And you've been hanging on by mother's prayers. But there comes a time where you've got to lift up your hands and say, He is my God. In him will I trust. Has he been good to anybody? identification if my people I, I, I've become his people not because I had enough sense to call him but when I was in the club and when I was in sin when I was when I was wasn't thinking about God come on now wasn't fit to live but wasn't ready to die God called me I need to set this thing straight you ain't called God God called you you didn't choose God. God chose you. There's got to be identification. You got to remember who you are. And in many ways, we allow our problems to snatch our identity. We allow what we are going through to change who we are. I don't care how much you go through, you are not what you're going through. Y'all, y'all know. Even when the devil is having a, 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 a high time in my life, I'm still a child of God. Even though I'm dealing with a sickness, even though I'm dealing with difficulties, I am not what I'm going through. Every now and then you got to remind yourself, I know my identity and I am a child of of God. If my people, identification, called by my name, identification, will humble themselves. That means that in order for God to turn it around, there's not only got to be identification, but there's got to be a willingness for submission. Because if you ever want God to stand up, you got to sit down. Come on, if you ever want God to have his way, you got to get out of the way. I, I wish I had somebody that know you when you decrease, God will increase. He said you got to humble yourself. This humility is a recognition that Jesus is still the answer for the world today. This submission is a realization that I've gone as far as I can go. Oh, this submission is a realization that it's above me. This submission is a realization that with man, some things are possible. But with God, wish I had some help in here, all things are possible. This submission, you heard it in the old day. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Come on, you heard the submission. Guide me oh thou great Jehovah pilgrims through this barren land we are weak but thou art mighty hold me with thy powerful hand this submission helps me to understand that we are nothing without God 
Anybody make that confession today? I'm nothing without God. Tell somebody, I'm nothing without him. In fact, it is in him that we live. We move. We have our be and that's why after 94 years, we got to go back to that place of submission. Because so many times we start out submitted. And when God lifts us up and starts blessing us, we forget who blessed us. If my people called by my name, can I keep going further? Come on, identification. There's got to not only be identification, but there's got to be submission. Humble themselves. But then he says there's got to be a conversation. Humble themselves and do what? Pray. In other words, who you talk to when problems show up shows where your trust is. You, 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 you talk to your friend, you talk to your family members about how many know they can only do so much. But I discovered in life I can have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about my problem. Anybody ever had to pray before? And guess, the, guess what? Amen. Your friends may be available sometimes, but his line, our God's line, is never too busy. I can call him in the morning. I can call him in the middle of the day. I can call him late in the midnight hour. Prayer is a conversation. It's not, it's not a monologue. It's a dialogue. Because if I say something to God, I've got expectation. Guess what? He's going to talk back to me. He's going to talk back to me. He's going to. Matter of fact, these verses are evidence that God will talk back to the one who talks to him. In 2 Chronicles chapter number 6, Solomon prays. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, God talks back. And unfortunately, many of you have missed your miracle because you had a monologue and forgot to listen to God so he can talk back to you. If my people called by my name shall humble themselves and do what? Pray, pray, but guess what? They can't just pray. They got to seek my face. In other words, it can't just be a conversation, but you've got to be willing to make supplication. He said, seek my face. In other words, Lord, I'm not letting go until you bless my soul. Is there anybody that know you can't just pray one time, but you got to keep on praying until God turns it around. You got to keep calling till you feel strength. Yeah. The more I call him, the better I've, I got to seek not only his hand, but I've got to seek his face. I've got to say, Lord, show me, show me your glory. Lord, show up and show out. I don't just want what you can give by way of present, but I want your presence. I want you to have your way. I want you to show up as the healer. Don't just heal, but I want to get to know the healer. Don't just provide. I want to get to know the provider. And there are many folk who want what God can give who want what God can do. But there are many in church that don't want God. I know this is a rough message for, for a first sermon here. I may not get invited back, but is there anybody that's seeking his face? Lord, just a closer walk with thee. Seek his face. But you cannot spend all of this time in the presence of God, you cannot get in the face of God and remain the same. Y'all miss it. Y'all miss it. Can I help you? Many times before God turns it, he turns you. Y'all, y'all miss it. Some of y'all, some of y'all missing your blessing because sometimes it don't need to be changed. 
Sometimes it's you that needs to change. Sometimes it's the way you looking at it. Sometimes it's your attitude that make your coworkers respond the way they would. Come on, somebody. Sometimes it's your disposition that make people not want to be around you. But you got to lift your hands and say, search me, Lord. And when you find, not if you find, but when you find anything in me that should not be taken out. In other words, if you want to turn around, there must not only be identification. If my people called by my name shall humble themselves, not only must be submission, humble themselves and pray a conversation and seek my face, supplication. But you got to be willing to turn from your wicked ways. In other words, there's got to be some elimination. Y'all miss it, y'all miss it, y'all miss it. Because many of you been praying for God to add some stuff to your life, but he said your storage too full. Uh, I was trying to, I was trying to add an app to my phone. I was trying to add an app to my phone. And, uh, and, 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 and here's the message, here's the message. It says no storage available. That's, that's why, can't you remember that song? They said, my storage is empty. Some of y'all, God will never fill you up because you are already full. Come on, come on, come on. What you're full of, you're full of bitterness. You're full of envy. You're full of, of, of holding on to stuff that happened 15 years. You're holding grudges. You're, come on now, you're holding resentment. You're holding hatred. You're holding doubt. You're holding depression. But just touch two or three people and tell them I'm making room for God. Huh? That's why I got to turn from my wicked ways. I got to let go of some people because I'm making room for God. Uh, excuse me. You say I'm acting brand new. Yeah, I'm making room for new. I can't do the things that I used to do. I can't go the places I used to go. I can't hang with who I used to hang around because I know that God needs space. Took somebody and say, make room for God. And that's why I'm encouraged today because God said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then, I can't even get to the next thing. I, I, I just got to give God a then praise. Because I know that serving the Lord will pay off after a while. And I need, I need, I need somebody that know when you do your part. The God we serve will do his part. Yeah, there's somebody that know that when I take one step, he will, he will take two. Come on, just bother your neighbor, and I want you to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, when you do your part, God will do his part. I got a few minutes left on the clock, but I want to tell you before I take my seat what a real turnaround entails. Notice he said, then will I hear from heaven. In other words, you know God's turning around because he said, I'm going to give you, here's number one, my constant attention. Because sin separates me from God. He hides himself from the iniquity of his people. But when you lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm available, Lord. Thine own way, then God says, 
then I will hear from heaven. Can I get a witness in here? It's a blessing when God starts leaning in your direction. Is there anybody here that know God will hear your faintest cry and answer by and by? And that's why I shout because God can never hear without responding. That's why you ought to give God glory because when God hears, he heals. When God hears, he starts making a way. When God hears, he starts opening doors. Come on and grab your neighbor's hand and tell them, say, neighbor, God's giving you his constant attention. But then he said, number two, I'll not only hear from heaven, but I will forgive their sin. In other words, I will give you crime acquittal. When you sin, you commit a crime against God. But is there anybody here that know that when you sin and confess your sins, he's able to forgive you of your sins and he'll, come on, forgive your sin and cast them into a sea of forgetfulness. This only for the real people. Is there anybody that know there are many times you went left when he told you to go right? You did the opposite of what he told you to do. But can somebody lift your hands and shout because he's in the forgiving business. That's why you ought to give God glory because you don't deserve to be here. But grace, I said grace and mercy kept you alive. The blood covered you. The blood washed you. The blood cleansed you. The blood forgave you. Come on, get somebody. Bow their hand. Pull them up out of their seat. Come on, everybody, get your one neighbor. Pull them up out of their seat and tell them I thank God that he forgives. That's why when you go out and evangelize, make sure you tell them one Friday, one Friday, they hung him high. Stretch him wide. Anybody know the story? He hung his head. For me, he died. But that's not how the story ends. Early. I need some good Baptist people. Hop up on your feet. Throw your head back. Shout early. He got up, and I thank God that he forgives. He acquitted me in the courts that needs. It's like it never even happened. Is there anybody that can shout because God cleaned your record? Watch the sins away. But I got one final thing to tell you. He said, I'll heal their land, which means I'll give you complete alleviation. Is there anybody here that's got some pain that no God can heal? Some hurt God can heal. I've come here with good news. God 
can heal you. God can not only heal you, but he'll heal your space. He'll heal your husband. He'll deliver your wife. He'll bring your child back home. Pull on somebody. I need about 50 more people that can get up on your feet. Put your hand in somebody's hand. Let's go to the country now. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. You can't do it sitting down. Come on, somebody pull on your neighbor. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them and say, whatever you need, God's got it. He'll complete your life. He'll make you whole. He'll heal your body. He'll make a way out of no way. I see y'all tired of me, but before I take my seat, can I ask y'all one question? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? If you know he will, come on, be a witness. Lift your hands. Throw your head back. Stick your chest out. Say, ah, yeah. Ah. Tell somebody he's able. He can heal, he can deliver, he can set free, he can open doors, he can dry tears, he can soothe doubt, calm fears. If you know he's able, if you believe he's gonna turn it around, on the count of three, shout one, two, He's turning around. He's turning around. Somebody ought to just get up. Turn around. Because that's what the rest of your year going to look like. Turn around on your job. Turn around in your marriage. Turn around in your finances. Turn around. Yeah. Yeah. sit up here looking pretty. Some of y'all had not moved yet. You know you need a turnaround. If you need a turnaround, just get up on your feet. Turn around. Late in the midnight hour. God. God. Go turn it around. It won't always be He turns it around. Matter of fact, get your praise partner. Say, you shout for me. I'm going to shout for you. One, two, one, two, three, shout. 